Now at 11, what budget cuts at Metro mean for our safety? State budget cuts could mean Medicare patients may have to go without dentures and diapers in Nevada. Preserving Las Vegas history, one neon sign at a time. And the White House press secretary pokes fun at Sarah Palin. This is News 3 Nightside with Jim Snyder and Sue Manteras. Good evening. It's a message we've heard from the school district and the fire department. Now we're hearing it from police. And no government agency is immune from these budget cuts. Metro Sheriff Doug Gillespie held the first of several town hall meetings tonight to outline budget cuts he'll have to make to his department. Gerard Ramallo was at the meeting, and Gerard, this is the first time Metro has had to present a budget smaller than the previous year. That's right, Sue. In fact, most years they've had an average increase in their budget of around 10 percent. Now, obviously, our current economy has changed things significantly, but Sheriff Gillespie says cuts will not affect the safety of the community. The revenues coming into our organization did not come into the level that was anticipated. It's a familiar message, this time affecting an area many are reluctant to cut, police. Metro Sheriff Doug Gillespie says reduced property tax revenues will, however, force his department to slash $56.3 million from the budget. And the non-essential people who are pushing a pencil, those are the ones that uh, they should let go up. At a town hall meeting on the west side of town, a handful of residents listened to the sheriff's plan, Gillespie urging them not to be concerned. Department analysts have already looked at a number of areas which could produce significant savings, like cutting back overtime, limiting use of take-home vehicles, and not filling vacant positions. But I want to make it clear, we are not laying off anyone. These are vacant positions, they're funded positions that we are eliminating as, as we move forward. Gillespie says the reduced budget was not the blow it could have been, as his department has already been looking for ways to save for the past couple years. Still, there are those in the community who worry even slight cuts could have consequences. Unfortunately, with so many vacant homes, so many people losing their jobs, I do have a concern that the crime rate might increase. This year, though, Gillespie says the opposite is true. Crime has actually dropped in several major areas. He vows to keep that a priority. When you call 911, there will be people there to answer your call. And it will continue to be answered in less than 10 seconds over 90% of the time. Few may like the idea of cutting from police, but Gillespie says Metro's vision to make this the safest community in America will not be compromised. Now, one thing that was not discussed at tonight's meeting was salaries. Those are actually negotiated through collective bargaining with the police union. However, Gillespie did say they will not be doing any immediate hiring. Three academies have been postponed. Sue. All right, Gerard, thank you. In 2005, voters approved the more cops quarter cent sales tax, which allowed for more uniformed officers on the streets. Gillespie says that tax is what's saving the department during these challenging times. And now we turn to the schools. Students learn about the power of protest in history class, and today they practiced it. Students walked out at local colleges and teachers picketed as lawmakers met in Las Vegas to discuss the budget crisis. How will the politicians respond to this public outcry? over education funding. Here's our Steve Krupe with a look. On the campus of UNLV, hundreds of students cut class to send a message that they're sick of watching the university system crumble amid the crisis. And then at the end of the school day, local K through 12 teachers gathered here at the Grant Sawyer building where lawmakers were taking public comment on the funding fiasco. And if you study history, the fall of any great nation is when you stop paying attention to the most important things, and that's education. There seems to be plenty of public support for schools, but the big question is, are the politicians willing to risk taking bold action? I'm not sure anybody's willing to take that risk now because of the fact that you have elections coming up. You know, at some point in time, they're going to have to say, we're going to be looking at what the cause of the problem is, and we're going to address that problem. Senator Horsford indicated that last night. He said no new taxes now, but in the future we have to take a look at what our problem is in terms of taxes. Why wait? Well, that's our question. Why wait? 
right now the education system is bleeding, the state of Nevada is bleeding, and all they're doing is treating the symptoms. They're not looking at the wound and saying, let's treat the wound and stop the symptoms. I personally would be willing to pay taxes. I've lived in five other states where I paid state taxes to help the schools and fire and police and safety and everything. Um, I'm perfectly willing to, let, to pay taxes myself. I think it's a travesty of justice that this could even be happening here in our wonderful state. And I think something needs to be done really soon to fix this because this is outrageous. You say something needs to be done, but yes. what and are we willing to do it? Um, I'm hoping that the leadership and power uh, can actually get something done, hopefully. Uh, it's going to take some coalition building. I think we need a new governor. The governor's plan to cut the budget includes layoffs, increasing class sizes, cutting the requirement for all-day kindergarten, and eliminating collective bargaining for teacher salaries. Steve Krupe, News 3. State lawmakers will host a town hall meeting in Las Vegas on Saturday morning. The focus, they say, will be on finding solutions rather than listening to complaints about the budget mess. Proposed cuts to deal with the state's budget crisis could mean seniors and children will have to go without the most basic of needs. Today, lawmakers who sit on the Interim Finance Committee heard a long list of dramatic scenarios involving health and human services. Yesterday, Governor Gibbons told state agencies to plan for their budgets to be cut by 10 percent. If that happens, services would have to ration such things as adult diapers and eliminate denture and hearing aid programs. It's repugnant to me that we will not provide diapers to seniors. That's repugnant. And so we will find the money so that that doesn't get cut. They're ugly. Uh, they're, uh, they're not easy things to do. They're just not uh, low-hanging fruit anymore. We are down to essential services, basic services, those types of things being reduced or eliminated. Lawmakers are holding hearings before a special legislative session February 23rd when they will try and agree with Governor Gibbons on how to close an $881 million budget shortfall. There are some signs that more people are starting to come back to Las Vegas. In December, there were more visitors than November, and that's the fourth consecutive month we've seen the numbers go up. So that's a good trend. The numbers for all of 2009 are out now. More than uh, 36 million people came to Las Vegas last year. Now, that is down 3% compared to 2008. But again, you have to look at the latest trend, which is consecutive months of increased attendance. A convention attendance for the year in 2009 was also down a big drop there, almost 24%. The annual occupancy rate for the, all the hotels was more than 81 percent. Slumping home sales in the valley for the start of the year, but they are up from a year ago. Home sales down more than 23 percent from December, but up more than 17 percent from last January. The median price of homes is also down 16 percent compared to the same time last year. However, the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors says some positive news is as more than 21 percent of the homes sold were were in short sales and a decrease in sales involving foreclosed homes. Okay, how about some good news for our wallets? Gas prices, there's one thing we can smile about. They've dropped six cents in Nevada since last month. AAA says the average price for a gallon of gas fell to 279. Now that is still 63 cents higher than it was this time last year. In the valley, it's down about a nickel at 275. The gas prices are down all across the state except in Elko, where they saw an increase of three cents a gallon. A half million of Toyota's popular hybrid Prius are now recalled worldwide. That includes some sold here in the U.S. That's because of braking problems on the latest model, the 2010. The Lexus HS 250H sedan is also on the recall list. Uh, the company has already launched recalls covering more than 8 million vehicles worldwide because of problems with the, either the slipping floor mats or the sticky accelerator, or accelerator pedals. You'll be contacted by the company if yours is on the list. Honda is dealing with its own recall now. The Japanese auto giant is adding almost 400,000 vehicles to an airbag recall. This move covers certain 2001 and 02 Accords, Civics, Odysseys and CRVs, as well as some 2002 Acura TL vehicles. According to the automaker, the driver's airbag inflators may deploy with too much pressure. That can cause the casing to break. That could be dangerous. It could cause injuries or, in severe cases, even death. Honda will notify affected owners who should then bring their vehicles into an authorized dealer. 
Now the latest from Haiti. It's been exactly four weeks since the monster earthquake ravaged that country, and now Haiti's government has raised the death toll. It says 230,000 people were killed on January 12th, up from 212,000. It says more bodies remain uncounted. The new figure gives the quake the same death toll as the 2004 tsunami in South Asia. Nine of the 10 Americans detained in Haiti went to court again today, where five of them were interviewed by a Haitian judge. They are charged with kidnapping 33 children. Haitian authorities said they tried to take them across the border into the Dominican Republic. Their Haitian attorney demanded their release yesterday and today, saying the Americans love Haiti and they should not be kept in jail. Actress Angelina Jolie spent time with earthquake victims today. It's her latest trip to help survivors of conflicts and natural disasters as a goodwill envoy for the United Nations Agency. She traveled to Port-au-Prince after visiting injured Haitian children in a hospital on Monday in neighboring Dominican Republic. Jolie says with her, along with her boyfriend Brad Pitt, they have donated $1 million from their foundation for relief efforts. Another sign that the Yucca Mountain nuclear waste dump is dead. Today, the Department of Energy withdrew 116 applications for water rights. Those rights would have been required to build a rail line to Yucca Mountain. Uh, last month, the Department of Energy withdrew its application to open the proposed nuclear waste site after President Obama removed all funding for Yucca Mountain in his budget. Neon signs are the mileposts that mark the way to Las Vegas' past. Now, more of them are getting a new life. As News 3's Maria Silva shows us, the neon boneyard near downtown Las Vegas is getting a big makeover. For many of us, the neon boneyard is a stroll down memory lane. The Stardust sign, the Golden Nugget was a, a groundbreaking design. From the better known signs and those considered iconic. The Moulin Rouge is one of my absolute favorite signs, designed by Betty Willis, a beautiful, beautiful sign. To lesser known signs, which will no doubt put a big smile on the face of any longtime local. That's the Coin Castle King. He's also a favorite. He's kind of uh, our guardian, our, our little guardian in the corner. These are some of about 150 signs that make up the current neon boneyard. But for the next four weeks, the signs will be carefully moved, some just a few feet away to the Cashman Center parking lot to make way for construction of the neon boneyard park. Danielle Kelly with the Neon Museum tells us the Neon Boneyard, which is currently not open for general admission, attracts about 900 visitors a month. Visitors who take part in pre-arranged guided tours. It breaks our heart to have to turn people away when they when they want to come visit and they can't. This project is expected to take about 10 months. In that time frame, those guided tours are being put on hold. As for when the general public will finally have access to the museum, that won't happen until next year. And that's going to be one part of a full campus that will include a curated collection of the signs as well as a restored La Concha Motel Lodge as our visitor center, but that's about a year and a half down the road. This current project, the Neon Boneyard Park, is a $1.9 million project funded in part by the Bureau of Land Management. The funds themselves are federal funds. They're not taxpayer funds. They're not city funds. This is what the site looks like right now, but in less than a year, it'll look something like this. For those who believe it's important to preserve our city's fabulous history, one sign at a time, the Neon Boneyard Park getting an A. Maria Silva, News 3. All those signs were donated, by the way. The Neon Museum itself is a nonprofit. It depends on private donations. For more information about all this, you can log on to our website at mynews3.com and click on links. From Healthline 3 tonight, First Lady Michelle Obama is hoping to move everyone in the right direction to help kids stay fit and fight obesity. Let's move. Let's get this done. Today, she kicked off a massive multi-year effort to help kids become less fat and more healthy called Let's Move. The First Lady cited a study showing the number of overweight children has tripled since 1970. She is urging parents to take charge of their children's diets. No matter how much they beg for pizza, fries, and candy, ultimately, they are not and should not be the ones calling the shots at dinner time. The program focuses on what families, communities, and the public and private sectors can do to help fight childhood obesity and aims to take steps to reduce childhood obesity within a generation.
He wants to get Democrats and Republicans to work together in Washington. And President Obama gathered a bipartisan group of lawmakers to the White House today as part of his State of the Union pledge to hold such gatherings every month. Among the topics, how to create jobs, what to do about gridlocked health care reform. President Obama says the same group's invited to a meeting February 25th for what he calls a substantive discussion on health care reform. Now, right after the president spoke about bipartisanship, his press secretary, Robert Gibbs, took a dig at former Republican vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin. Gibbs mocked Palin's cheat sheet at a Tea Party convention from the weekend when she referenced notes that were written on her hand. Robert Gibbs showed the words hope and change on his hand as he started his daily briefing with reporters. Look, and, and there's some in their party that want to do away with, as you saw during the presidential campaign, the entire... Uh, I wrote a few things down. I wrote, I wrote, uh, I wrote, I wrote eggs, milk, and bread. And I crossed out bread just so I can make uh, pancakes for Ethan if it snows. And then, then I wrote down hope and change just in, in case I forgot. Palin spoke Saturday in Nashville, and photographs you've probably seen these by now. Video shows she had the words energy, tax and lift American spirits on her hand. During one question, she, there it is, looked down at the palm of her hand for a cue. Uh, people are making a big deal about this because in her speech, she mocked President Obama's use of notes on teleprompters. Yeah, we saw. Yeah, who doesn't know that music? Yeah, we saw your hands in there. We are three days away from the start of the Winter Games in Vancouver, and the excitement is building. Just ask everybody in the studio here. Fans swarmed U.S. skier Lindsey Vaughn at the Vancouver airport today, asking for autographs and pictures. Vaughn made her World Cup debut at the age of 16. Now 25, she has collected several medals and titles, and was a skier in the Salt Lake City and Torino Olympics. Vaughn will participate in five Olympic events in Vancouver, leading some to call her the Michael Phelps of the Winter Games. Will there be enough snow for Vaughn and all the other skiers? The head of the Vancouver Olympic Committee addressed concerns over the lack of snow at Cypress Mountain, where warm weather and rain has melted the snow at lower elevations. They have used trucks and helicopters to bring in the snow, and organizers say there are no concerns that events will be canceled. Well, we got plenty up in Mount Charleston, yeah. Steve Lee. Yeah, we can fly a little bit up there. Yeah. You said uh, the strange part is right as the games are starting, they're probably going to start to get dumped on. Yeah, this is a classic El Nino pattern that we've been talking about for the last couple of months. We get all the weather, and they've been very dry. Now there's going to be a shift after this system that's raining out there right now goes through. We're going to be dry, like we should, the mm -hmm. desert, and they're going to so be really So does it wet. normally shift, like in mid-February or so? No, there's really no rhyme or reason, oh. and it, it can shift temporarily and then come back. Mm -hmm. It won't be until next year until the sea surface temperatures moderate, and then we'll be back to a normal-type pattern. It's coming. We won't have this much rain next winter, so yeah. we should get out and enjoy it. And it continues to rain right now. It's been a very active day weather-wise. Yet again, we're six weeks into the new year, and we've done better than half of what we normally get during 365 days. Let me show you a little time lapse. Here's how it's looked as afternoon turned to evening. We sort of had a reprieve, a break from the rain during the last couple hours before darkness, and then right after it got dark, then the rain started again, and it pretty much hasn't stopped here over the last few hours. Earlier this afternoon, we had a period, oh, wait a second, you have to see that, because that was a good time lapse. We had a period of some pretty good showers that pushed on through, and uh, about a tenth of an inch of rain in 20 minutes created quite a few puddles. And with that sliver of sunshine, sneak preview, Kenny Grand's photo from Pahrump got Captured a great rainbow. I love when you can see both ends of the rainbow. That's some pretty good stuff. So here's a live picture. You can see the sort of the fuzzy type of appearance with the clouds. We've got some light rain. It's been pretty steady for the last couple of hours. Temperatures at 45. Winds picked up a little bit out of the north at 13. And oh yeah, pretty decent amount of humidity. It's at 81%. With all the thick cloud covering the rain, the temperature didn't move much. 48 and 42 for the high and low. And here are the rainfall totals in neighborhoods across the valley. Many neighborhoods right at or even now above a quarter of an inch. We've spoken with our friends up at the lodge. They're at half a foot of snow. They might get another six inches plus before this evening is out. At McCarran, about two-tenths of an inch. Puts our 2010 total at two and two-thirds inches, way above where we should be for this, the 9th of February. Another system moving toward the middle Atlantic states. Plenty to show you. Let's start in Dayton, Ohio. 
they really the snow hasn't been the big deal although you can see it's piled up on the side but now the wind's blowing and they have more snow tonight another couple of inches and wind chills of five degrees below zero now if you're in the middle atlantic states and you've dealt with two feet of snow over the weekend and you've got two more feet coming from this system look how this gentleman is clearing his walkway he's not doing it the old-fashioned way the shovel no way he busted out the saw and he is cutting a path so he can get from the street to his door one chunk at a time. That's good old ingenuity. Well, come on back. Let's check out our Doppler radar because it's not snow here, at least not in the valley, but it's pretty steady rain. This is going to last for the next couple of hours and continue to snow up in the mountains. There's more where this came from. In fact, the moisture continues to pump up from the south thanks to this area of low pressure. You can see the spinning off the California coast. It is going to go right around us to the south, and as it pushes farther to the south and farther to the east, the rain will die down. That'll be by mid-morning tomorrow. We'll begin to clear out slowly tomorrow afternoon, and then a change in the pattern where the weather systems will go back up north. Overnight tonight, 18 cold ones up on the mountain, 38 in Mesquite. Then your highs tomorrow, Boulder City at 56, Pahrump at 53, Laughlin's looking at 61. In town with the occasional rain, 42 degrees, maybe even a couple of embedded thunderstorms sliding nearby too. Then tomorrow, some rain in the morning will clear out by the afternoon, albeit a slow process. Look for a high temperature of 55 degrees. Your seven-day forecast, we're heading toward President's Day, Valentine's Day weekend. Now we're talking. 68. Yeah, we're going to be up around 70 degrees this weekend, and everybody's going to say, what rain? Yeah. We'll get a chance to towel off, and for a while, the El Nino pattern that's been bringing all these systems in will go away. And we'll be like Las Vegas again. Back to normal. I'd build a couple of hotels with this kind of weekend weather. Not a bad plan. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. A uh, man wanted in Nye County has been caught, but he didn't go peacefully. Plus, former President George W. Bush is featured on a billboard. Who's behind this ad? Did the Super Bowl help Nevada casinos or hurt them? The numbers for the local sports books are in. I'll tell you about that coming up. Real-time closed captioning sponsored by Rob Graham and Associates. At Rob Graham and Associates, we can help you through the complex probate process. Call us at 255-6161. This President's Day, come into R.C. Willie where you'll find out you don't have to live in the White House to have a great house. The savings are store-wide during one of our biggest events of the year. Energy-efficient appliances save time, energy, and water. This Frigidaire washer is only $4.49. Save now on HDTVs and get all three of these TVs for just $6.99. Plus, get both the DVD player and this DVD movie for $10 with purchase. Free hot dogs Saturday and Monday. No down and no interest for 18 months. R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Introducing the all-new Ram Heavy Duty. With a legendary 6.7-liter Cummins turbo diesel and all-new refined interior, it gives brains more to think with, muscles more to work with, trophy shelves more to deal with. Introducing the 2010 Motor Trend Truck of the Year, Ram. Now get 1.9% financing for 60 months on Ram Heavy Duty, Motor Trend's 2010 Truck of the Year. When I look at Dish Network and DirecTV, I can't tell the difference, can you? you? I mean, are the comedies really funnier? Are the movies movier? It's a word. Your shows are the same. Okay. There is a difference. Dish Network costs less. Why would you ever pay more for TV? Ooh, you're good. Now save $180 on our most popular packages, Dish Network. Why would you ever pay more for TV? <laughs> You just got a traffic ticket. What are you going to do now? Call 702 Traffic. We go to court for you. Just dial traffic. 872 3342. With 702 Traffic, you'll have no points, no traffic school, no insurance increase. Dial T R A F F I C and let 702 Traffic resolve your traffic ticket. You do not want to see me in court. Dial traffic. Closed captioning in Spanish, sponsored by attorney Adam Kuttner. Injured? Call the law offices of Adam S. Kuttner for a free consultation. 382-0000. Despite budget cuts, this woman continues to make a difference in our community. And when you wake up with us Wednesday morning, you'll see why her personal sacrifice is for the greater good. We start now at 430. Hope to see you then. News 4 in Reno, News 10 in Elko, News 3 Las Vegas. We are Nevada's Information Network. 
He was accused of shooting at a sheriff's deputy and authorities in Knight County caught up with a suspect on the run. Police say Daniel Dixon held a gun at officers this evening and would not surrender. A deputy shot and wounded him. They say he turned the gun on himself at that point and he died. Dixon was pulled over last night in Pahrump. Knight County deputies say there was an altercation. He pulled out a gun and fired at the sheriff's deputy. The officer who was not hit fired back and Dixon took off. Former President George W. Bush is taking center stage on the side of an interstate in Minnesota. This billboard shows a picture of Bush waving and smiling. And next to the picture is the line, Miss Me Yet? An advertising company says a group of small business owners is behind the billboard. They say they want to remain anonymous, but wanted to send a message that they're unhappy with how things are going in Washington. Up next here on Nightside tonight, local standout and Rams running back Steven Jackson cleared of assault allegations. Plus, it's been a long time since two ranked teams played at the Thomas and Mac in the regular season. It happens tomorrow night. A UNLV New Mexico preview next in News 3 Sports. Your Southern Nevada Hyundai dealers are giving you more than ever before. More unbeatable quality. Nine Hyundai models are five-star safety rated. Seven get at least 30 MPG. No wonder. Hyundai is now the most fuel-efficient car maker in America. And just announced, the Hyundai Elantra is now ranked higher than Civic and Corolla. Plus, with the Hyundai Assurance, you get a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Right now, get more savings. Hyundai Elantras are now as low as $139 a month. Hurry to Planet Hyundai or Henderson Hyundai today. Remember, we now offer extended sales and service hours. My family came to America with empty pockets and overflowing dreams. Their story is our American story. Work, save, and prosper. It's my story, too. Together with my husband, we created thousands of new jobs for Nevada families. I took on a powerful politician and defeated him because he taxed us while enriching himself. I even shut down the taxation committee to prevent a job-killing tax increase. I'm Sue Loudon, and I approve this message because fighting for your job is my job. Attention RV buyers. Don't miss the Las Vegas RV Super Show pre-sale event at Las Vegas RV. Six days only. February 8th through 13th. Over 200 new and used RVs. 2009 and 2010 closeouts and bank repos at huge discounts. Unbeatable deals on over 50 manufacturers. Trades welcome. On the spot financing and bank approvals. Exit 27 to RV heaven. Free parking. Free admission. Don't miss the Las Vegas RV Super Show pre-sale event at Las Vegas RV. Call 896-9000 for hours and directions. Real-time closed captioning sponsored by Dr. Howard M. Hack. Colon cancer can be cured if caught in time. A colonoscopy is recommended after age 50. Call me. Long Kurgan, the Rebs able to knock off 12th ranked BYU at the Thomas and Mac on Saturday. Another ranked team in town tomorrow. 15th ranked New Mexico. Rebs beat the Lobos in Albuquerque earlier this year thanks to seven three pointers by Kendall Wallace. Now, since UNLV cracked the top 25 this week, 23rd in the AP poll, tomorrow's game marks the first regular season meeting between two ranked teams at the Thomas and Mac in 20 years. I just want our team to, to realize, you know, what's at stake. Um, it, it seems like every time, you know, we, we know what's at stake and what we're playing for, um, you know, we come out hard and really play well. So, um, you know, that, that's that's where um, our focus needs to be um, on this one particular game and to take it one game at a time. Well, yeah, we know they because we beat them at their house, you know, they definitely want to come, uh, you know, I'm going to say even it out a little bit. But we know we just got to be prepared for that. And as long as we know that that's what's going to happen, we play hard and we'll be ready for it. Yeah, big game. UNLV five and a half point favorites, both in that three-way tie atop the Mountain West Conference. UNLV, New Mexico, BYU, all seven and two. Oh, by the way, UNLV plays at San Diego State on Saturday. But first things first, 15th ranked New Mexico tomorrow. Former El Dorado High and current St. Louis Rams running back Steven Jackson won't face charges or allegations he assaulted his then pregnant girlfriend at his home in Las Vegas last year. Investigators found insufficient evidence to pursue the case. Jackson issued a, issued a statement last month saying the allegations were untrue. Super Bowl numbers for the sports books are in. Nevada Gaming Control said better statewide. Wager close to $83 million on Sunday's game. Books won around $6.9 million. Slight increase over last year's numbers. Again, that's statewide. As we told you yesterday, mixed bag locally. Some did okay. Others took a little hit. Party time in New Orleans. They don't have a problem with that. Celebrating the Saints Super Bowl victory at the parade tonight. Players riding atop the Mardi Gras floats through New Orleans, throwing out the beads. And we're all guessing that party, yeah, is still going on. 
Roy Jones Jr. and Bernard Hopkins will finally get their rematch at Mandalay Bay April 3rd. The two met way back in 1993. Jones won that one. The two held a press conference in New York today. And that's what I want people to understand. It's personal. You know, you go and you hear uh, fighters and sometimes say that it's personal and there's no really history there. For 17 years and we just fighting, trust me, it's been a lot of things that's been said back and forth in those years. It's not like I got nothing to prove, it's just that I want to show fans that I'm still me and that Bernard Hopkins, or even after 17 years, still can't beat me. It's just that simple. Hopkins 45, Jones 41. Okay. A lot of water under the bridge. Well, well, that's right. Okay. Experienced or seasoned. Yes. As so George someone Foreman like used to say. say. Yes. Right. Seasoned fist there. Yes. All right. Thanks, Kev. Well, next on Nightside, Harleys owned by several celebrities are now on display. Find out where they're revving up some style coming up next. On the next face to face, who's most at risk from the budget cuts about to befall the state? Children, homeless people, and others from the state's most vulnerable residents. Details on the next face-to-face. -face. Chapman Dodge Chrysler Jeep will triple your tax refund up to $9,000 as a down payment on any new vehicle from our huge selection. Did you get a $1,000 return? We'll triple it to three. Uncle Sam sends you two grand? Chapman triples it to six. And if your refund is $3,000, Chapman will triple it to an incredible $9,000. Triple your tax refund up to $9,000 on any new vehicle. Nothing's held back. Chapman Dodge Chrysler Jeep, where car buying is easy as pie. Excuse me, guys. Cheeseburger. Yeah. Excuse me, too, because I got a And the kids' grilled cheese meal. And crayons in a coloring book. Thank you. What for guys who love grilled cheese but hate ordering off the kids' menu? Introducing a grilled cheese for grown-ups. The Grilled Cheese Bacon Burger, only at Carl's Jr. Hey, there's Canadian Kirsten, the new girl. She's from a foreign country. Nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be a California happy cow. Ooh. Anywho, I'm looking forward to getting to know ya. Okay, see you around, eh? Huh? Her English is flawless. Sure is. You never know she was Canadian. Mm -mm. Great milk comes from happy cows. Happy cows come from California. Look for dairy brands with the real California seals. Adrenaline. You can look for it in some overpriced latte extra foam thing or get to your Jeep dealer during the Adrenaline Rush sales event and start your adventure in a new Wrangler. Grand Cherokee. Liberty or Patriot. Now during the Adrenaline Rush sales event, get 0% financing plus $1,000 GMAC bonus cash on Jeep Wrangler. I live, I ride, I am Jeep. Milwaukee, the Harley-Davidson Museum welcomed the hogs of some famous stars and movies. The celebrity bikes are a part of the museum's Harleys and Hollywood exhibit that opens on Friday. Ten Harleys featured in films like uh, Star Trek. Was it Harley in Star Trek? Also, G.I. Joe, The Rise of the Cobra. Those will be on display. The uh, personal bikes of rapper Ludacris and stars Jesse James and Steve McQueen are also featured in the exhibit. So. Was it the young Shatner at was the very it? beginning of the movie, remember? Oh, did he was he the was he jet the propelled Harley? Harley. Right. Yeah. So it, okay. All right. Thanks for uh, choosing Night Side, everyone. Be careful out there. Fried Grilled. Now you can have both. You can have it all. Kentucky Grilled Chicken and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Plus, get four free pieces of Kentucky Grilled Chicken with any 10-piece meal or larger. There's presidential savings galore at R.C. Willie's President's Day Sale. It's the carpet sale you've been waiting for. R.C. Willie's annual $99 labor sale. We'll carpet any size home and you'll pay just $99 for the labor. Plus, save an additional 10 to 21% on in-stock carpet. Enjoy incredible prices on our enormous flooring inventory and $99 labor. Professional installation is available. Hurry, $99 labor ends soon. Hail to the sale at R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. Introducing the all-new Ram Heavy Duty. With a legendary 6.7-liter Cummins turbo diesel and all-new refined interior, it gives brains more to think with, muscles more to work with, trophy shelves more to deal with. 
Introducing the 2010 Motor Trend Truck of the Year, Ram. Now get 1.9% financing for 60 months on Ram Heavy Duty, Motor Trend's 2010 Truck of the Year. Ready to unthink the wing? KFC Fiery Grilled Wings, marinated and grilled to seal in the one-of-a-kind taste. Try five wings or a bucket of 20. Wake up with the Wagner starting at 4.30 a.m.